Where's she going? You're offering yourself as a hostage. That's what I said. She stays. You go. Mum. If you're not really interested in joining me, I'll extend the invitation to Tanya. Did you know that they had a gun and a grenade? What? The druggies. Yeah. Gerald, just tell me where they are. Right here, Libby. Oh, Mum. Oh, you're okay. Was JJ there too? Oh, no. We picked him up afterwards. We're fine, truly. Physically, yes. Ben, is he okay? Uh, the cut to his head's been dealt with, but he's having hourly neuro obs. They were on pee? Not here, not now. I'm yeah. taking you guys home. Sorry, sorry. Um, you look really pale, so. Will you stop fussing? A good night's sleep, that's all I need. I'll see you tomorrow. No, you will not. Look, I know you've been a hero, but enough's enough. Hello, post-traumatic stress disorder. No, I, I will not have you falling to pieces all over the desk. Well, no chance to that, I'd say, but some time off is a good idea. The same goes for you, Maya. Oh, no, I'm not leaving uh, you. You can stop. It's my call. I want you to take the next two days off. End of. OK. You're late. It's way past your curfew. It didn't take you long, did it? What's up? Home by dark was the rule. I just picked him up from rugby practice. Oh, OK. Sorry. But I really don't think that you should be playing rugby when you're grounded. But I'd be letting the team down. We've lost Ryan. He's one of our best forwards. And we've got a big game tomorrow. Well, TK and I are both working tomorrow. So... So we can't supervise you. So no rugby game for you. What? That's a bit tough. Well, that's the way it is. And another thing. You're inside from now on, so move all your stuff in from the sleep out. Is it okay if I have a shot first? I might allow that. And seeing as you're not playing tomorrow, you can get some study done. Your call. But playing rugby is going to help him get back on track, channel all the energy. I'll try and avoid working on Saturdays. But left to his own devices, I hate to think what he might get up to with a bunch of rugby heads all amped up after the game. Fair enough, I guess. He has a long way to go before I can trust him again. If we make it too easy for him, he just... he won't learn anything, will he? You should never have gone into that bank. Why didn't the police stop you? I guess they just weren't expecting it. No, because normal people run the other way. So instead of just losing our mum, we could have lost you too. I wasn't thinking. I just went for it. Oh, you went for it? Like you went for Ethan Pearce? Shut up, Lippy. If it hadn't been for Maya, I'd be dead and so would a whole lot of other people. But it's up to the police to... There, there wasn't a lot that they could do. But Maya managed to talk those poor kids around. Kids? They're not much older than you. They'll be in prison for a very long time. Probably never get their children back. Well, they're hopeless peaheads, so... Yes, exactly. I do wish you'd calm down, Libby, because I'd like you to take me home. I'm calm enough. Good. I've had more thrills than I need today. I'm so proud of you. You were so brave. What about you? You were in there for hours. I didn't have a choice. <laughs> Ready to take off? Hang on, I'll keep the door for you. Take it easy, yeah? So, high jinx at the bank, eh? High jinx. Poor old Yvonne nearly got herself blown up. Oh, the dud grenade, eh? What a couple of dopey bankruptors they turned out to be. What about Mad Maya? Oi! What? Running in on a couple of peahits on the rampage is hardly the action of a sane woman. No, but a hell of a gutsy one. A shoulder dislocation, cubicle three. <sighs> hey, how goes the heroes? Yeah, up and at it. I'm thinking about going away for a couple of days. Oh, so you'd be by your lonesome. Well, cope. Tonight's taken care of. Oh, damn. I thought we were going to catch up. IV, seven-ish. I'll see you there. Hey, Joyce. Hey, Towns. Cubicle three. Shoulder that needs relocating. I think he may have suffered long enough. Hey, sweet. I don't think he is. After the metazolam I gave him? Did I forget to tell you? Yeah. The life cycle of these fascinating... Morning. Yeah. Previously, it would have been a radical... That's so fascinating. 
It's boring. Well, that's easily fixed. What's the plan for today? Study, I guess. And? Look, can't study all day. Well, tell Sarah that, man. She's gone away hey, with... Don't you dare. Stop the moaning and just get on with it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rather feel sorry for yourself. Whinge about mum. Anything but accept that you brought this on yourself. I'm a disappointment. I get that. That's putting it lightly. I'm a disgusting human being, OK? Look, you can wallow or you can get on and start proving to your mum that you're not. You need to prove it to yourself as well. By doing maths and stuff. Yeah, a bit of that. Then you can go and see Ryan. He's unconscious. All oh, right, so what's the point? All right, there you go. You've got way better things to do with your time. And there? Yes. Sorry, Candace. All over. Right. I'm almost certain you have acute appendicitis. But first, we'll get you something for that pain, OK? Uh, morphine, SP, protocol, thanks, Tracy. I'll have to have an operation. I'll say so, but I'm going to get a surgeon to come have a look at you. Can you get my dad? Sure, but your mum will be back in a moment. I know it's a bit scary, but we'll look after you, OK? You have to call my dad. No, Candace, I'm not having him here. But, Mum... I said no. I'm, I'm pretty sure Candace has appendicitis. Darling. She will need surgery, and I'm sure her father would like to know and be here for... No, my decision, and I said no. You're no good at all to her. It's OK, darling, you'll be fine. OK, so on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst? 3. And before...? 10. Right, so you are feeling a little bit better? Yeah. Okay, I need to pop away, but if the pain gets any worse, just call me. Thank you. Mum, please call Dad. He'll be far too busy. And it'll be no use anyway. It's not fair. Just because you hate him. <sighs> That's enough. It's not helping getting yourself all worked up. Thank you. That woman is a cow. Well, is petrified and she wants her father here. How can she say no to her? Oh, we don't know the story, do we? Yeah, we do. Nasty breakup, and now she's trying to poison the kid against her father. Oh, we don't know that. Well, whatever. If she wants him here, that's what she should have. I do have his number on her notes. I could accidentally call him no. and let him... No. It's not about business. Leave it, and that's in order. He reached for his keys, then his gun. Key at the ready, he paused. Then he jabbed the key in the lock, shoved the door wide open, raised his gun. Sprawled on the couch was his ex-wife. He knew already that she was dead. <laughs> First corpse. Took long enough, hey, bro? Hey, bro. I think he's waking up. His eyes flickered. Ryan. Hello. It happens sometimes. He's not ready to wake up yet. OK. When did you last see your wife? Ex-wife, Christmas Eve, 1997. And no, I didn't kill her. D.I. Shelby didn't look like he believed him for a second. Maybe you've had enough for today. Flagging it due to lack of interest. Oh, it's just like every other thriller you've read. But maybe it'll get better. You can tell me to stop at any time. Shelby was overweight. He looked to be in his early 50s, but probably years younger. You won't mind taking some time off school, will you? Yes. Really? So why do I have so much trouble getting you up and off in the mornings? Oh, Candace. It's all right. The surgeon said it's a very straightforward operation. There's absolutely nothing... I can... want Dad! Oh, for goodness sake, Candace. Grow up! Do you think he'd actually bother to come? No, he wouldn't. He doesn't give a damn about either of us. We're history, thank goodness. And the sooner you get that into your Mrs. head, the better. Excuse me? Outside, please. What's this about? You've got no right to talk to me. Look, like your this. daughter is very sick and very frightened, all right? And I'm not going to listen to you talk to her like that. I talk to her any way I like. Look, whatever went on between you and Candace's father, you do not take it out on her. 
All right, she needs love and support. Now, her father couldn't possibly do a worse job than you. You should be ashamed of yourself. Hey, this won't be doing Candace a lot of good either. How long had he been out to it? He looked up the steep bank. He wasn't feeling any pain, so maybe he hadn't broken anything. He started to push himself up. So far, so good. Taking his time, he slowly got to his feet. By some miracle, he'd plummeted a good hundred metres, but survived unscathed. But then, he felt cold steel press into, press into the back of his neck. <laughs> Bummer. Something's happening. It's okay. We'll just make sure he doesn't harm himself. What was that about? Like you said, she's a cow. I had to stop her. By ripping into her at volume. It's a side to you I've not seen before and never expected to. Look, she had no right to keep the father in the dark about the surgery. There's always a chance that something might go wrong. He should be there. Look, I agree with you, but you went way over the top. You lost it. Just for a moment, I'll apologise. I think it might take more than that. It's perhaps best that you stay clear for now. I don't want you getting fired up again. There's no chance. Still, it is probably best you pack it in for today, yeah? Get over yourself. Is there a personal side to this? Look, it just so happens that I don't like it when a kid who's in pain and facing surgery is given a hard time by her mother. All right? I'm charting an increased dose of phenytoin. It wasn't me reading to him, was it? The storyline was getting pretty violent. No, the seizure was due to intracerebral bleeding, a direct result of his head injury. It's a good thing to read to him. You reckon? It's not like he's hearing me. Well, not so. The research on this type of auditory stimulus is very compelling. So, me droning on? Well, it's debatable whether it's because it exercises the primitive cognitive process of the brain or because on some level it reassures the patient that someone cares about them. So I should keep reading to him? Well, you could just try talking to him. A one-sided conversation is not easy. I find two-sided conversations difficult sometimes, but, well, that's me. I'm sure you're just fine at chatting. I don't know. Can you tell me about the surgery, if that's not difficult? No, not at all. You may need to tell me when to stop. <laughs> hey there. Are you all sick? Yeah. You're going to be OK, you know. I hope so. Now, is it all right if I come see you after? Yeah. If your mum doesn't mind. I'm sorry again about before. It's OK, except she still won't call my dad. So, uh, any requests for when I call by? I don't know, ice cream, uh, pizza, sack. What's his name? Um... Ice block. <laughs> I, uh, I'll better let you go. I'll see you very soon, OK? OK. That was good of him. <laughs> Lucky old you. He's only the dishiest doc in the building. and I'll get back to you. Uh, Mr. Adams, Maxwell Avia from Shortland Street Hospital. I'm calling about your daughter, Candice. Uh, she's about to have surgery for appendicitis and she'd very much like to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, we have a new owner to break in. Nope, no such luck, I'm afraid. The new owner's asked me to stay and run the place at least for the next few months. Oh. Or is this just like the last time where you only pretended to sell? No, why would I do a thing like that, Tracy? Because nothing is ever as it seems with you, Karen Mitchell. So I'm not the only bloke who gets a hard time from Miss Morrison. <sighs> no freebie for you then. Ah, oh, go on. It's just the night for a tall run. <laughs> Candace came through the op well. Yes. And Dad turned up. Yes. 
Of course you know you called him. So you're all up to date with the Adams family, eh? Well, he hadn't turned up when I went to see Candace. So you missed out on all the fun. What fun? One almighty slanging match in the corridor. Well, she wouldn't let him see Candace. He was in no fit state. He's a drunk and a particularly nasty one. Also, a petty crim who spent more time inside than out. <clears throat> Mrs. Adams was spitting. She'll make a formal complaint for sure. Well, even rat bags have the right to see their kids. Whose side are you on? Because it's not the patients. You seem to be jumping up and down for a drunken lout who only wanted to wind up his ex. OK, guys, school's out. Let's no, let hang it. on. Who was going to accidentally ring this drunken lout and tell him about his poor little girl? And who was it that told me that it was none of our business and, in fact, ordered me not to? You know what? Tanya's right. No more shock talk. <sighs> only because you know you don't have a leg to stand on. I give up. Could I have been any clearer about his curfew? He's home by the time it's dark. It's well past that now. Well past the time he was meant to be meeting us here. And you are late as well. Did you uh, check if he's still with Ryan? As if. He would have lasted an hour tops. He'll be off who knows where doing God knows what. I give him chance after chance and he blows it every time. He might as well just go home because there's no way that well, he'll looks even... like he has been with Ryan all this time. Uh, get real. But the brain is both so intricate and flexible that patients are able to regain or relearn functions and skills. It's been cool, but my mum's waiting for me. Thanks, Dr. Jacobs. You're welcome. You are so late. I've had it with you. It doesn't matter what I say. You just go hey, your Hey, I way. just lost track of time. You lost track of time. And I thought that you might have got it into your head that you need to do exactly what is asked of you. A simple thing, like turn up when you're supposed to, but even that is too much to ask. Where have you been? With Ryan. All this time? Yeah. You're a great ED nurse, as where you should be. Oh, I think I'm getting to be a pretty good theatre nurse. I'm learning a lot. Scalpel, please. Mop my brow. <laughs> You're a dog's body. Mm, we're so not an ED. Uh, so bitter, so discontented. I don't know how you can carry on in this job. Well, I will be asking for a transfer if your tanties become a regular thing. I'd still like to know the whole story, though. What was it about that case that so pushed your buttons? It was her face. Mouth like a cat's bum. And women with almighty chips on their shoulder really bring out the worst in me. I think I'll transfer. Leave you two to fight this out. No, 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 it's okay. Subject close. Uh, more drinks, yes? Not for me. Three's a crowd. Sorry. I'll knock this back and I'll be on my way. Okay. I'm not even going to ask what that row was about. When are you two not at each other's throats? You enjoy it so much. Bollocks. One more time. The only reason we row is because he's a complete jerk. A jerk that I am not attracted to. And if you had seen him rip into a patient's mother, you wouldn't be attracted to him either. You are so very welcome to him. Enjoy your night. Hello, I'll make us some kai. Do you need a hand? I'll uh, see what we'll go first, mate. Ah, uh, in a minute. I want to believe you, Dan. I just hope you understand that it's not that easy. Did you really spend that whole time with Ryan? Yeah. Well, most of us would have taken a break, gone and done something else for a while. <sighs> I so wanted to for the first hour or so. Like, he was just lying there. But I knew I'd feel stink if I did, so... I kept on reading to him, and the book got quite good. When Ryan had that seizure, that must have been pretty scary. Yeah. His whole body was going, like, mad. You must have wanted to get away then. Yeah, but the nurse asked me to help her. It felt like it went on forever. Dr Jacobs came and gave him something. She's a bit weird, eh? She has Asperger's syndrome. Yeah, I know that, but... Man, she can talk. What? So she chewed your ear off for hours on end? I asked her some questions about Ryan. And then I read to him some more. He loved the bit where the hero had a scrap with the wrestler. <laughs> Dr Jacobs came back and we talked some more. Well, no. She talked, I listened. But it was good stuff. I'm sorry. 
Maybe we should do something tomorrow. Go for a drive up the coast and have lunch or something. Oh, I can't. The hero is stuck in the lift shaft and the lift's heading on down. Ryan's gagging to know how he's going to get out of this one. But another time. between you two. Oh, well, she's a stroppy thing. For sure, but you can't resist having a go right back at her, can you? What, and I should let her get away with it? No, it's tonight, for instance. You spent most of it sniping at each other. <laughs> we, we, we had a bit of a rocky day. Yeah, I felt a bit spare. Well, we don't want that now, do we? we? You know what they say about people who are always fighting with each other? What, they either can't stand each other or they really like each other. Which is it with you and Tracy? I take it you want me to be honest here? Yes, please. Then I'll have to say the latter. You like each other? Except it's not mutual. Or so she says. What? I called her on it. Uh, told her that her hostility is uh, thinly disguised lust and she shot me down. So you like her? Well, I do, but no go. What am I? Run her up? Well, I wouldn't put it that way. I mean, there's no contact. Only because she's not interested, but... Well, so she says. Well, look, I sounded her out and she didn't want to know, and that's that. And I did, so it's all on. Hey, I I'm, I'm trying to be totally honest here, OK? That's what you wanted. Yes, and thank you. Tracy's right. You are an absolute jerk. I'll tell you something I'm not. A consolation prize. He's an arrogant jerk who thinks he can treat women like garbage. What a player. Freedom mean. Women, eh? I don't know why they've got their knickers in a twist. Keep them keen. He's pretty arrogant. Yeah, right? then some. You still like him. Shortland Street, 7 o'clock tomorrow, TV2.